You need a doctor. There's one in the village. It's too late for, for a doctor. My student, Richard Evans. Gotta talk to him. But you need help, you... Please, you... hurry. Michael, get Dr. Ward. Boy C doesn't move. Then come on, keep it moving over here. Well, that's not too bad at all, Rich. Well, I owe it all to you, Sean. Wait till you see how shocked as he play tomorrow. You'll never see the likes of it again. I thought you said Riley was the best hurling player you'd ever see. Ah, oh, that was last month. Oh. Master Evans! Master Evans! There's a there's a man out front who wants to talk to you. I'm afraid he's dying. Richard Evans? Well, yes, sir, I am. It's important I speak to you. Alone. You must get a message. Brother Tom, you must tell no one else what I'm going to say. No one. Understand? Yes, sir. Boyne Castle, my room, the Andiron. The information's there. Everything. Sergeant Clune. Who was he, Rich? I don't know. I never saw him before. But then why should he ask to speak to you? I don't know. Speak to Tom Evans in room 211, please. Did he say when he was coming back? No, no message. I'll call back later. Thanks. Oh, Evans, as soon as you've changed, report back to me. Sergeant Clune's on his way over here to ask you some questions. Spoke to a boy at the school before he died. Yes. It was Evans' brother. Don't know the man who was shot. That's right, sir. Then how do you account for the fact that he asked to speak to you? Well, I, I guess I can account for it. 
According to the identification we found on the body, he was an American. A Mr. Ralph Stafford. Does that name mean anything to you? No, sir. Oh, come on, Evans. You're speaking to a representative of the law. I know that, sir, but the fact is I've never even heard of a Mr. Stafford. Exactly what did Mr. Stafford say to you before he died? Well, I, I couldn't understand just what he said, sir. Not a word? No, sir. Are you quite sure of that? Yes, sir. There'll be a coroner's inquest, at which time you'll be placed under oath and made to answer the questions put to you. I have no further questions for the lad at present, Mr. Hoth. Good day. Mr. Hoth? Yes? Oh, I'm Jim Everest. I'm with the American Embassy in Dublin. How do you do? You're excused, Evans. Oh, just a moment. Are you Richard Evans? Yes, sir, I am. Oh, you're the young man I came to see. Me? What for? Well, we received the message concerning Mr. Stafford's death. That was regrettable. Very regrettable. I've been sent down by the embassy to escort you to Dublin. There are certain questions that we'd like to ask you. Well, can't you ask him here? I'm afraid not. The ambassador's aide would like to speak to you personally. All right, sir. Are you packed? Yes, sir. My suitcase is at the dorm. Good. Let's go. Oh, Mr. Everest, I wonder, would you take a friend of Richard's with you? They have tickets for a hurling match tomorrow. Oh, very well. I suppose it'll be all right. Good day, Mr. Hoth. Thank you. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Ainsworth. He's with the embassy, too. your destination. I advise you to cooperate. Now I suggest that you make yourselves comfortable. We have a long ride ahead of us.
is the other boy? We have to bring him along in order to avoid suspicion. How much does he know? Nothing. What have you told him? About what? All right. Sit him down. You are Richard Evans? Listen, we have a complete dossier on you as well as your brother. You were born in Philadelphia. You moved to Washington when you were eight years old. You went to Ridgewood Military Academy. After graduation, you came here to Ireland as an exchange student. You arrived here exactly four months ago on the 21st of January. Look, who are you? What do you want with me? Your brother is an agent for the United States government. This is your brother. Look, there's got to be a mix-up someplace. Tom's a sales representative for a steel company. That is what he would like us both to believe. He was sent here with Ralph Stafford by the United States government to meet someone. Stefan Voss, the foremost nuclear physicist of my country. You Americans have labeled Voss a defector. We prefer to call him a traitor. I've never heard of him. Didn't Stafford mention his name to you before he died? No, sir, he didn't. Stafford made the arrangements for bringing Volos into this country. He and your brother were to meet him and arrange to have him flown by Air Force jet to the United States. We want to know how he is to be brought in and where. You are going to help us. How do you expect me to know? I told you, I don't know anything. Stafford spoke to you just before he died. I want to know exactly what he told you. He didn't tell me anything. He tried to, but he died before he had a chance. I'm waiting to hear the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Levick, go into the village, get Dr. Malvini. Tell him to bring me him sodium pentothal. Do you know what is sodium pentothal? A truth serum. After one injection, we shall know if you are telling the truth. Come on, John! Oh, oh. You have answered for me one very important question. Tie them, gag them, take them to the next room. After the boy has had his injection, bring him back here to me. personal effects. Is this everything? Yes, everything, Mr. Evans. Where's gloves? There weren't any. Where'd you say the body was found? Leinster School. Leinster School? Yes, Mr. Evans. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. 
What'd you say to him? I told him to go like a rat up a drain pipe. <laughs> Look out! Where did they go? They came this way. They can't have gone far. Then they must have been on the truck. afternoon with his friend, Sean, with a Mr. Everest from your embassy. Can I use your telephone? Of course. Yes, I'd like the American embassy in Dublin. Would you hurry up the call, please? It's urgent. Thank you.
Yeah, this is Tom Evans. I'd like to talk to my brother, Richard. He was brought there this afternoon by one of your people, a Mr. Everest. You sure? Right, thanks. There's no official at the embassy by the name of Everest. You wait here. You're in a desperate hurry to dare. I didn't think you were coming. Thank you. Well, Rich? Huh? We've been good pals right along. Ever since you first came to Leinster School, true? Well, yeah. And how many times did you say I took you out to the hurling field to try and teach you a thing or two about the game? Well, lots of times. Okay, Sean, what is it? You still say your brother works for a steel company. Well, that's what I thought. And you still say Mr. Stafford didn't tell you anything. Look, Sean, I don't know any more about what's going on than you do. I'm just hoping that Tom can explain what this is all about. Don't look now. I think that guy up there is watching us. The one with the beard. Watching us? Yeah, through the rearview mirror. Something else I noticed, too. He hasn't turned a page of that newspaper since he sat down. Do you, uh, suppose he's one of them? I don't know. I'll tell you for sure now. He was the one behind the desk, the one who asked all the questions. How do you know? That ring he's wearing. What are we gonna do? Himself sitting there proud as life, he's probably carrying a gun as big as a cannon. I'll be back in a minute. We decided to get off at the next stop, sir. I'm gonna call my brother and have him meet us there. I was just wondering, about how long will it be before we get there? I'd say close to 20 minutes. Thank you, sir. Oh, there'll be a shilling refund. There you are. Thank you. Look, we'll wait as long as we can. We decided to go on, sir. Here's your money back. Well, suit yourselves, lads. Hey, what if he telephones ahead and there's some of his men waiting for us? Yeah, I thought of that, too. We just have to get off before that. I'll call Tom and have him pick us up. Yeah. You know, Rich, all of this is really quite exciting. But if I were to tell it, I doubt if anybody would believe me. Except for one person. Who? Me. <laughs> we're gonna get off here, sir. 
could you be making up your minds now? Well, this time it's for real. Ah, oh, well, here's your refund. Six months. Thank you, sir. There's a pub. We can call from there. Okay. second my job was to fix the walls and I fixed the walls yes right you agree yeah oh I want to discuss it over a drink any drink in the house you have a keg of stout you have not one have you <laughs> well look Pally yes now listen Pally listen Pally I'll come over Sullivan's Royal Hotel. I'd like to speak to Tom Evans. Hey, Rich. It's himself. Excuse me, sir. Oh, something I can do for you, sir. I'm looking for a couple of young boys. Oh, all right. They're on the phone down there. Hear what's happened to Where us? have you two been? I've spent half the night looking for You're you. You're not gonna believe this, Tom. I'll just save it till we get up to my room. You can tell me everything from scratch. Some guy was following us. He even seemed to know everything about me from the time I was born. Yeah, and you too, Tom. He claimed you're an American agent. Said you came here to meet a defector. A 
man. What was his name, Sean? Uh, Bolos. Something yeah, like that. Bolos. Said you and Mr. Stafford were supposed to meet him, take me to the United States. You believe all that, Rich? Well, after what Sean and I have been through, what do you expect me to believe? That you're not an American agent? All right. And maybe you don't want to know it. Stafford told me just before he died. All right, if Stafford had a message for me, let me have it. I don't know what it means. But he said, my room, the Andire, Boyne Castle. The information's there, everything. That's all he said, then he died. That's all I need. Can you describe the man who asked you all those questions? He was shining a light in my eyes the whole time. Well, we did see him again in the bus. How do you know it was the same man? It was a ring he was wearing. Black with a silver crest. What did he look like, any of these people? seemed much older. He had a beard and wore dark glasses. And he walked with a cane. We didn't get a very close look at him, though. Do you know who he is, Tom? It's the man I think he is. He's the head of the secret police behind the Iron Curtain. We only know him as Kirstner. It'd take a pretty big deal to get him all the way out here, wouldn't it? Yeah. The only thing is, is that your description doesn't match what intelligence has on him. It looks like he's using a disguise. This whole thing's liable to blow up any time now. That's why I'm sending you two to London. London? Yeah, with what you both know, I can't risk letting him get his hands on you again. Well, what are you going to be doing? I'm going to go to Boyne Castle. I'll let your parents know about the trip, Sean. I'll arrange for the tickets and have a man from the embassy drop you off the airport. Come on, Tom. That's it, Rich. You better hurry, boys. -E Goodbye. Good luck. Hey, Rich, look. That's one of the men we saw last night. Come on, we gotta get out of here. Let's go. They must be forward. You'll have to be seated. We're taking off shortly. Back to the hotel and catch Tom before he leaves. Right. Evans checked out a few minutes ago. I'll bet anything those two guys were tailing Tom. Sean, do you know the way to Boyne Castle? Yeah, there's only the one main highway going north to County Mayo. Come on, we gotta catch up to Tom before those guys do.
You will come with us, Mr. Evans, please. Quietly. Look, there's Tom's car. That's the car that followed him. Yeah. Gentlemen. We're looking for my brother, Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans? Not know Mr. Evans registered here. Well, his car's parked outside. Is he alone? Yes. Oh, you must mean the American. He joined, um, yes, Mr. Fredericks and his friends in room 55. That way. Thank you, sir. It's me. Yes. No. He offered no resistance. Excellent. We will be there in 12 minutes. Don't make Mr. Evans too comfortable. Service, sir. Get rid of him. My cousin think we're heading back. Now, do you want to tell me why you two aren't in London? Well, we got on the airplane, just like you said. And one of the men we saw at that house got on the plane, too. He was with another man. So we got off again to the first-class section without them seeing us. That still doesn't explain what you're doing here. We went back to your hotel, and we saw those two guys with the inn driving off. I just figured they were following you. So you came up here to let me know about it, huh? Well, I appreciate it, fellas, but what am I going to do with you? Well, I can't very well send you back now. Well, we could go with you. I'm 
Looks like I have no other choice, but let's get one thing straight. You're gonna follow orders. If we get separated, we'll meet at Boyne Castle. Is that clear? Okay. All right, let's go. I don't think we can risk it. It won't take Curzon long to figure out we gave him the slip back there. Yeah, but it wouldn't take long to eat breakfast either. <laughs> the way you two eat, we'd be there for hours. You can still eat a horse. Well, I was thinking more along the lines of ham and eggs and biscuits and jam and orange juice. Mm, yeah, I must admit I'm a bit famished myself. Yeah, I'm afraid this is one trip you're going to have to make on empty stomachs. You mean all the way to County Mail? There's one thing we got going for us. Cursor doesn't know where we're heading. As long as we can stay one jump ahead of him, we can keep it that way. <laughs> Looks like we lost that jump I was talking about. Stem, all right. What are we going to do? We're going to try and outrun him. They have seen us. No, no. We will never get the information we need. Give me your map. We will never find them in the dark. Now we are here, you two cover here, and here we will search here. We should have them in our hands by morning. I want that car destroyed in the event they come back to it.
get into the car. And hurry! Get you guys wait here, I'll get the tickets. Yeah. You think we lost him? Don't know, but I have the strangest feeling they're about here someplace. Yeah, so do I. Find out if the dining car is open and get something to eat. Start searching now. I'm hurry. here. Searched every car. There's no sign of them. They must be on the train. I saw them get on myself. But we've already find them. All right. When the train slows down for these cows, we'll jump. Pick a soft spot, and when you hit the ground, roll. Okay? Okay. Okay. a few times by car. Well, how do we get to the road to Longford? Uh, should be over there somewhere. I'm not sure how far. Let's go. Got it the radio. 
the speed we're going, I think we'd have made better time walking. What are we going to do when we get to Longford, Tom? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is talk to the constable and see if he can arrange some transportation for the rest of our trip. Well, while you're doing that, I think maybe Sean and I will try to dig up something to eat. No, I'm afraid not, Rich. We can't risk you guys being seen. Well, did you ever see the like of that? The next thing you know, these city boys will be taken over Ireland in its entirety with very little regard for the common folk. Well, I can't say that I blame you for taking cover. That car would come a small bit closer, all our bodies would have been decorating the side of the road. Here you go. Well, it looks like Kersner left two men with a car. Does that train stop at Longford, Sean? Yeah. Well, we can expect him to be there when we get there. Rich, I want you and Sean to wait here for me in the ruins of that old abbey till I get back. If I'm not back in about half an hour or so, you'll know I didn't get past Kersner and his men, okay? What do you want us to do if that happens? They won't be so concerned with catching you two if they get their hands on me. So I want you to go to Boyne Castle, go to Stafford's room and get whatever information he left there, and call it in to a Mr. Mannering at the American Embassy in Dublin. Then I want it destroyed. Is that clear? Hey, Tom, be careful, huh? Yeah. Let's go. Taking kidney pie. Sure smells good. Do you suppose we wouldn't be exactly disobeying orders? No, that's just what I think of myself. There it is. Think we should? Yeah. Well, here you go, Rich. We'll have to forsake our manners. Sir, have you have any assistance at all? Yeah, I need some transportation. Transportation? Ah, uh, well, no, sir, that's a problem. Well, I have a letter here from your deputy prime minister identifying me. Yes, that's right, sir. Well, no. 
Well, she's the only car we have. At the moment, there's Caliber, and he's be out of the station and waiting for the Dublin train. Now we... How long has he been gone? Uh, about 20 minutes.
Back to the houses. in the church. At least we separated them from Evans. Beyond those fields are marshlands. We should have little trouble finding them out there. What do you suggest we do now, Rich? We can't go back there. We're going on to Boyne Castle, just like Tom told us. Well, if we're going, we best get moving. A nice walk to the next village. Especially when it comes to food, our rest. I sure hope Tom got away. You know, I bet you he's waiting right there when we get to Boyne Castle. You ever been there, Sean? Sean? Sounds out in an early morning hunt. Well, it sounds like they're coming this way. Second thoughts, Rich, they don't sound like foxhounds. The bane's different. What do you mean different? My father once owned a pair of bloodhounds, and their bane sounded like that when they were on the scent. Bloodhounds? And you don't think that. I think we'd best be on our way and quick. It's 
It's no use, Rich. They're bound to catch us. Well, what are we going to do? We'll have to try and fool them. How? Look, you hide there, in the water. Now I'll make a circle, try and throw the dogs off the track, and then double back. You think it'll work? Well, it's our only chance. Yeah. this way. What is it you want? Do you know anywhere we can rent a car? Car? Well, now, uh, mind you, I'm not in the business of renting cars, but I won't be using my own. Is this your car? It is. It's a fine car. They don't make them like this anymore. Yeah, but the tires are all flat. Ah, pumping a little bit of muscle else, you'll be riding high. Well, does it run? Does it run? Like silk have treated decent. How far are you going? We're going to County Mayo. I'll charge you by the mile. Seven and six for every ten miles you put on the speedometer. That's a bit steep, isn't it? Well, we'll take it or leave it. It's my final award. I'll take it. Now, I'll treat her like you would your own. You'll have no trouble. Be back about half past two. I'll have a tune for you. Thanks a lot. Three hours. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Rich? Well, there's an inn here called the Ram's Head, and they have roast beef the like of which you've never seen before in your life. No, be a kind of Oh, no, Blas All right, what are you talking about? Private conversation. I understand. Just, just leave me out of it. No, he wouldn't do that. Wouldn't he? He's trying to tell me I'm the only colleague in the whole of Ireland. No, it was a compliment. I meant it. That's enough of that. Would you be caring for dessert? Oh, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of full. Our speciality for today is deep de apple pie. Well, maybe just a little tiny piece. Well, you can make that too. Excuse me. I've been meaning to ask. You're American, aren't you? Why does it show? I suppose it's the way you talk. What do you think of Ireland? Well... It must be awfully exciting compared to America. No, I wouldn't exactly say that. I'll be fetching your pie now. Well, now, Rich, you never told me you had a knife of the girls. It appears you've melted our poor heart like a lump of tallow you have. The operator's got your call through. Well, thank you.
Hello, Lord Boyne. Uh, I'm sorry to bother you, sir, but my name is Richard Evans. I was just wondering if my brother Tom has arrived there yet. Well, yes, sir. He's a friend of Mr. Stafford's. Then would you mind leaving a message for him? Just tell him that Sean and I are okay and we should be there by some time this afternoon. Thank you, sir. He hasn't gotten there yet. Yeah, well, no one told me I wouldn't worry. Bet you he'll be there when we arrive. Is that the smallest piece you have? I've always been told you Americans have big appetites. Yeah, I guess that rumor has gotten around. By the way, do you know if there are any rooms available? Number 10 is vacant. Would you be staying long? Just a couple of hours. You'd rent a room for a couple hours? It's just that we're a little bit behind in our sleep. Seems a waste of good money just for a wee nap. Would you wake us up at 2 o'clock, please? 2 o'clock at 2. Oh, by the way, if anybody comes looking for us, will you let us know? Yes, I will. Thanks. them there until we arrive. Use force if necessary. I'm no longer interested in playing games with children. They are still heading northwest. Spanish Point, Blackhead, Liscano Bay.
given instructions to keep them here until I arrive. I cannot understand how they knew you were here. I thought... I'm not concerned with what you thought. You have allowed two children to get away from you. It doesn't matter. I think I know where they're going. Where? I overheard one of them speaking on the telephone. I heard them say that he and his young friend were to meet Agent Evans with a Lord Boyne. We have been going about this in the wrong way. We will get the information we need, and this time, they will come to us. Take a left and then there's free wheeling all the way. Hey, lads, I need a deposit. That'd be enough. I suppose it'll do. Well, good luck, lads. We have been expecting you, Mr. Evans. You have given us a lot of trouble. Too much trouble. Where do we go from here, Kersner? How do you know who I am? That beard only changed your looks, not your methods. You are not going anywhere. You will simply wait here with us. Your brother and his young friend will be here very soon. They will give us the information we need. Put him without us. people about like that, you oversized bully. Keep quiet, old man. Quiet, is it you're telling me? In my own castle. Please don't, my lord. Mark my words, we'll get the lot of you before you can leave County Mayo. That you can be certain. There really is no way out, Mr. Evans. You may as well make yourself comfortable. You'll be here for quite a while. 
You may even die here. Well, how'd you do, Mr. Evans? I'm Lord Boyd. How do you do, sir? Your brother telephoned. He was safe then, but he's coming here this afternoon. That's what I'm worried about. Is there any way out of here? I'm afraid not, Mr. Evans. Hello? No one there. There it is, Rich. Boyne Castle. Kind of a lonely looking place, isn't it? Well, one thing I'll wager on Mr. Cursor himself wouldn't get at us behind those walls. Richard Evans. Has my brother arrived yet? No, no, he has not. Well, this is my friend from school, Sean O'Connor. I know Connor's always welcome here. Thank you, sir. Although I'm surprised you got here at all, driving this monstrosity. It looks about to explode at any moment. Well, I wouldn't bet against it, sir. Should, should we should be going inside. Barely here will bring your luggage. Well, I'm afraid we don't have any, sir. Oh, have you not? Now, how's that? Well, we lost it on the trip. But isn't that unfortunate? Never mind. Barely here will find your change of clothes. Mind you, I don't guarantee they'll fit. I guess we could use a change, sir. Good. You'll see to that. Won't you, Bailey? Yes, my lord. Come along, then. Well, now, tell me. What are you two young lads doing here at Boyne Castle? Well, actually, we're just supposed to be my brother. I'm not for sure he'd show up by now. Ah, where's he coming from, then? Well, he was staying at Sullivan's. We saw him there yesterday. Ah, is that right? You're sure he hasn't phoned or anything? Ah, uh, but when nothing's got to to me. Uh, is it urgent? I mean, what's your problem? He's coming to pick up Mr. Stafford's belongings. His belongings? Mr. Stafford won't be coming back here. Oh, what do you mean? Where's he gone, then? Well, he's dead, sir. Yeah. Well, how did that happen? A car accident. Well, I'm very sorry to hear that. He was a fine gentleman. Fine gentleman. You no, know, it's almost like you'd expect to find King Arthur in the Knights of the Round Table here. <laughs> well, may I remind you, Rich, that King Arthur was an Englishman. That's hardly very welcome on Irish soil. <laughs> You know your history, lad. If you care to freshen up before you have your dinner, I'll show you your room. Thank you, sir. This way, then. Here you are, lads. Right along here. This is your room. I hope you'll be very comfortable. Excuse me, sir. Which was Mr. Stafford's room? Which one? Uh, that one. Over there. There now. Bailey will be along shortly with your change of clothes. And we usually start serving dinner about 8 o'clock. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Why'd you tell him Mr. Stafford died in a car accident? I just thought maybe Tom wouldn't want us telling any more than we have to to anybody. Are you going to check Stafford's room now? No, I think we'd better wait till Tom gets here. Look, I don't like to say this, Rich, but what if Tom doesn't get here? Remember, he did say that if we got here first, you were to get the message to Mr. Mannering at the embassy. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'll be right back.
was outside the window. Oh. I don't know, but it looks like to me somebody in this castle could be working for Kirstner. Well, what are we going to do? Just don't let on that we suspect anything. And hope Tom shows up pretty soon. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Master Evans, there's something I must tell you. I hope you enjoy your dinner, sir. Ah, there you are, lads. Are the clothes a decent fit? Oh, they're fine, thank you very much. Ah, that's grand. It's better than what we had. I hope you've enough appetite for your dinner. Yes. I know I have for mine. We usually do. It'll be a simple meal, but please, God, there'll be enough of it. Ah, doesn't that smell grand? Uh, serve our guests first, if you please, sir. Yes, my lord. I trust you have no objection to oxtail soup? No, sir, it's my favorite. That's grand. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, my lord. It's okay. Never mind, Sarah, never mind. But we wouldn't like our guests to think we were country clubs, now, would we? No, my lord. Both doing quite well so far. But I would not want any slips, you understand? Yes. If you'll forgive my curiosity, I was just wondering if your brother's visit had anything to do with Mr. Stafford's mission in County Mayo. Well, I don't know, sir. Uh, thank you, Sarah. That'll do. You see, it was the Deputy Prime Minister himself who called and asked me to let Mr. Stafford have a room here. Now, he said that it was quite important that we cooperate with Mr. Stafford, and he even intimated that the nature of his work was, uh... Now, what did he call it now? Uh, top secret. Was that it? Well, I wouldn't know about that, sir. Did your brother work for Mr. Stafford, then? Well, yes, sir. I think they were with the same company. Ah, is that right? Mr. Stafford did mention to me that he was expecting to meet somebody here in the county. And quite soon. Of course, it's uh, very difficult for me to imagine who he was expecting to meet, but uh, I would venture to guess he's somebody uh, quite important. I mean, judging by the air of mystery surrounding his arrival, you know. How do you like it, Rich? Soup, how do you like it? Oh, it's fine. I myself can see something strange about Lord Boyne's broke. You want to know why? Yeah, why? He's not Lord Boyne. What do you mean? Remember, I talked to Lord Boyne on the telephone. He hardly had any brogue at all. I don't know why I didn't catch that before. Yeah, I should have known. So he speaks to the brogue of the country people, not the nobility. Not only that, but he knows way too much about what Mr. Stafford was doing here. Stafford never would have told him he came here to meet someone. Besides that, Tom said the only other person who knew anything about this at all was Mr. Mannering. Well, then he must be one of them, Rich. Well, who else could he be? You know, something else. Bailey was going to tell me something just before whoever that guy is came in tonight. Yes, yeah, Sarah seemed afraid, too. Do you get the feeling that all of a sudden that we're in a prison instead of a castle? Yeah. Well, what are we doing? We're gonna get out of here. You know, I've been thinking. Suppose Tom did get here. Could be they've locked him up someplace in this castle. I know it's risky, but I'm gonna check Stafford's room again and try to get a call through to Mr. Mannering at the embassy. You keep watching in case anybody comes.
the American Embassy in Dublin, please. So we. Hello, I'd like to speak to Mr. Mannering, please. He's not in. When do you expect him back? Would you give him this message, please? Tell him it's very important. Tell him Mr. Volos is arriving at Westport aboard the cargo ship, the Shannon. It's going to dock tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Thank you for the information, Master Evans. Thank you. Bring him here immediately. Go for the other boy. Hello. Hello. Come on, Rich. They're coming. Your message to your embassy was most informative. I am very anxious to see Wallace's face when he discovers me waiting for him. What are you going to do with him? Shall we simply say that he will not be returning with us? You're the man who asked all the questions. The man on the bus. Well, you're... Yes. Yes, sir. Why all the disguise? American intelligence has a complete description of me. I cannot leave my own country unless I take certain precautions. How did you know we were coming to Point Castle? Your friend's telephone call to Lord Boyne was overheard by one of my men. You really must learn to exercise more caution. Even your brother walked in here totally unprepared. Where is Tom? You shall be taken to him immediately. You two okay? Yeah, we're just great. Lord Point? That's right. I'm afraid you really thought he was you at first, sir. Now, nah, don't worry. It's not your fault. Does Kirsner know anything? He knows everything. Did just like you told me, Tom. When you didn't show up, I got the message from Stafford's room and called it into the embassy. Kirsner listened in on the call. Yeah, I fell in the same trap myself. When is Bowles getting in? Tomorrow on a cargo ship. Well, is there any way out of here, Tom? Only through that door, and it'll take a tank to put a dent in it. Well, are none of these guns any good? Antiques. Don't worry.
just got an idea how we can get out of here. Now, I don't know if it'll work, but I think it's worth a try. Well, let's hear it. We haven't got much time. Well, did Rich ever tell you he won the javelin championships in school? Yeah, he mentioned it. Why? Oh, it was a great throw. It was about 190 feet or something. Yeah, 194 six. Look, you're not going to argue over fractions. Well, it was 190 well, wait, a wait a minute. Now, what does this have to do with getting us out of here? Well, we need rope. Rope? Rope. I don't know what you want it for, but there's some holding up that tapestry. Yeah, that should do it. Do what? Well, see, we can tie one end of the rope to this. Yeah. Now, Rich can toss it through that window. And if he can get it to wedge itself against the wall outside, all one of us has to do is to climb up the rope. Well, that's, if you don't mind us taking down your tapestry, sir. No, sir, so. I only hope your plan works. Yeah, so do I. Don't worry, we'll have you out here in no time. You will remain here. If anyone comes, meet them outside the gatehouse. Say Lord Boyne is gone for the day. Allow no one to enter the castle under any circumstances. Is that clear? All right, get the car now. We go to meet the boat very soon. As soon as Velos is in our hands, I return with him here. Why you? Directly beneath this floor is an old dungeon. There are boxes and crates there as dry as can be. We shall take all our prisoners down there, and there will be a fire. A fire that no one in this castle shall survive. There will be no one left to identify us or to say that we ever have been here. No one. There you go, champ. Well done. 194 six. What'd I tell you? I sure hope this works. So do I, especially since it was my idea.
show me where they're locked up. Well, I can't see the gate from here. Well, what do you think is happening? I don't know, but we did hear that car pull out. But I wouldn't like to bet they've all gone. All right, inside. We have a way of handling the likes of you. Have you ever felt the smart of a shillelagh across the broad of your back? Well, have you? You dirty scruffy. Well, come along. The door is open. What are you waiting for? We'll never be able to thank you enough for saving us. Well, it was Rich who got the 194.6. He's the only one left in the castle. I'd like him kept locked up here till I get back. Of course, Mr. Now, I have to intercept Volus. Do you have a boat or something I could use? I have a dory docked at the beach with a power fleet and dogs. Good, thank you. And I hope you'll be very uncomfortable during your stay here. Finds out Volus isn't on that ship, there's no telling what he's liable to do. And no shenanigans from you two either. Grand sight. A Slingsby T49 two seater. How do you know so much about him? Well, I got a license to fly guards. Long to a club until Kenny. I never knew that. Oh, I've been up since last summer. Maybe you'd like to go up sometime. Sure. Listen, let's get back up there so we can see Tom. Okay. our destination, Mr. Wallace, Westport, Northern Ireland. There'll be an American agent waiting for us there with a car to drive us to Dublin, where a jet will be standing by. Are you sure there won't be someone else waiting there also, Mr. Carlton? Well, now, look, I can't honestly say what might happen. Since we got you smuggled out, so far, things have gone pretty smoothly. Yeah, perhaps too smoothly. We'll get you to the States in one piece. Ah, uh, don't underestimate your position, Mr. Carlton. I know Mr. Kersner's methods and resources. And I also know how effective he can be when he wants someone eliminated. It's difficult for me to believe that we've come this far unmo unmolested. That's one of our fellows. Airman! Captain, tell the captain to stop the ship! Captain, that man in the boat is an American agent. He asked you to stop the ship. It's urgent. What happened? You and Volos are getting off here. They know. Come on. Stopped. It's Evans. He's taking Boros off the boat. It's impossible. And explain to me what he's doing out there. We have got to overtake that boat. Good morning. 
in the clear weather. Beautiful morning. I want it to be possible to borrow your boat. The boat? Yes. We are willing to pay for the use. Oh, I'm afraid that's not possible, so you see, I have this fishing party I'm taking out this morning. I would not argue the point. Oh, no, sir, no, no, I wasn't going to do that. But, but, but tell me, will you be leaving me both back to me? That depends on whether you inform the police. Somehow I think that you will. Again, coming in to make his approach. It's a lovely sight. He's over -ruttering. I think he's only a beginner. It's a sliding club that uses one of my fields. Something to do with the updraft from the cliffs. Any sign of my brother yet, sir? I'll see him. Mind if I have a look? Sure. There's his boat. Tom's okay. He's got bolos with him. Hey, let me have a look. Sure, in that boat. We've got to try and stop him. But how? I don't know. Unless maybe that glider can help us somehow. Hey, wait a minute. I haven't flown for about a year. But you can't fly, right? Yeah, but those cliffs are very high. And even if we do get out there, what are we supposed to do? I don't know exactly. Come on. Cannonballs. If you don't mind us using a few of them, sir. I'll give you a hand. Come on, that's enough. Lordship. Well, what's he doing? It looks like they're putting cannonballs into the glider. I suppose his lordship has... We better find out. Yeah. Release it.
that's a really strong lift. You sure you know how to fly this thing? Well, we're airborne, aren't we? You can say that again. There they are. Come on, let's go. Yo, yeah, Lizzie, we've got to use more lift to gain height. They're in your pile. I know, sir. That, I know. I hope they get your plane back, too. Feet, that should do it. We're going out first and then down. Get ready. We're going down. Well, here goes. Can you get this thing any lower? Well, I'll try. Okay, but nothing's happening. surprising when you get to do who's doing the flying. Hey, Tom! You know them, Evans? That's my kid brother. The last thing I told him to do was stay put. I think we should all be thankful he didn't.
you two young fellows to think I don't appreciate your sudden hey, appearance Sean, over the speak. bay. But I, I just remember, we, we got to get back to school. Yeah, we've got that hurling match with some more time. All right, and if we leave right now, we can just make it. Here. Okay. 